of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My beloved one, today is fourth day of January, Monday after Epiphany. Our readings will be coming from 1 John chapter 3, verse 22, chapter 4, verse 6. A rest of the Psalm will come from Psalm 2, verse 8. A gospel message will come from Matthew Gospel chapter 4, verse 12 to 17, 23 to 25. The theme of our message today is Jesus began his ministry. When Jesus learned that John had been arrested, he left Nazareth and went to stay in the Capernaum in this in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. Went to dwell by this side. I want to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. And men who live in darkness have seen great light. But who see in the shadow of death, a great light has shined upon them. That is, the light of nation has shined upon them, and that's Christ. That is the fulfillment when he saw himself in Zebulun and Naphtali. These are pagan countries. These are people who don't know the truth. And God, Christ came into them. And from there, Jesus Christ started to preach in their synagogues. And preaching the kingdom of God. What was his message? Repent. The kingdom of God is close at hand. Believe the good news. That is message. Repent. Abandon your old way of living. Embrace the new way of living in Christ. For the kingdom of God is close at home. That is the call Christ began his ministry with. And that was the call of John the Baptist when he came. Repent and, and make your way straight for the Lord. So Christ began his ministry by this. He called every person to repentance. If any nation is doing well by the time Christ came, he doesn't need to call any person to repentance. He doesn't need to call, but he called the whole universe, the whole human being to repentance. For all of us are sin and fall short of this grace of God. So when people begin to talk about their culture of my people, our culture of our people, that God was there before Jesus came, you are just deceiving yourself. In short, you can be an antichrist. And that's the way, stop to way of rejecting the gospel message. Call all of us to repent and abandon your old way of living and come and embrace the new way of God. Abraham was called like that at the answer they call. And he's calling all of us Live your old way of life. Live your old ways of doing things. Live your old thoughts. Come and embrace the new way. People begin to teach about the culture of their fathers, the culture of their ancient thoughts. That's, that's antichrist. That's the way of rejecting the gospel message. There are people who knew God before Christ came. I heresy. You make God a liar. And that's why Jesus called them to repentance. And when Jesus called them to repentance, Jesus started healing all the sick and curing their infirmities. Casting out demons. That will show you the new way of life. It wasn't like that before. And the fame went wide all over this region of Galilee. And great throne followed him. From Galilee to Decapolis. From Jerusalem and Judea. And beyond Jordan. People were embracing the new message, repenting and believing the good news. Abandoned their old way of living and embracing the new way of life. 
That is the message we are still calling people today. Abandon your old way of life. Abandon the human way of doing things and believe the way of Christ. That's the new way. The old way is the survival of the fetus. You don't care who dies to give you a cup of tea, the Darwinian theory. There is no morality in international relationship. If you can live and they die, it doesn't matter. And we're talking about parochial people, our territory, our country, our race, our this. But Christ called all of us, live all this way. Come and embrace universal brotherhood, universal sisterhood. Come and see your brothers in Christ. Come and see we're up in Christ. No black and white in Christ. No Greek and Jew in Christ. Come and be brothers. Calling the whole world to, to celebrate living and no more death. So that he began his ministry. And that's the ministry that we have been told today, look. Beloved, Paul or John was telling us, beloved, if you receive from God, we receive from God whatever we ask. That's the new message. If we keep his commandments, there is no magic about that. Keep to the commandments of God, ask for anything, you will get it. Provided you keep to the commandments of God and do what is pleasing to God, He's the one who dispenses all these things. And that's why He told us, seek you face the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and everything will be added unto you. Okay. See, Matthew Gospel chapter 6, verse 25. It's verse 33. Seek you face the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. So keep this commandment and do what is pleasing him. Ask for anything, you will receive it. And you only know you are him if you are keeping to the word. If you keep to the word of God, you abide in God, God abides in you. If you don't keep to the commandments of God, God is not in you, you are not in God. And the message is that we should believe in his only son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith in him, the only begotten son of God. And whoever confesses that Jesus Christ is son of God, you are in God. And God is in you. And you, the love of God, goes to perfection. If you are in Christ, you will listen to his word. If you have the word, you listen to the word. And the word listens to you. But if you are for God, God, people in God listens to you. And because we are of God, people who believe in God listen to us. And the spirit of God is true. It's truth, nothing more. If you have the word, the word listens to you. If you have God, the people of God listens to you. And that's why Christ said, the sheep that is mine listens to me, doesn't listen to any other one. And the sheep that is mine follows me, doesn't follow any other one. And I speak for the, uh, Christ said, I speak of the truth. And the only people who believe in truth listens to me. And he warned us about false prophets. This whole process has gone into the world is warning us. We're going to deny Christ and Satan that pleases the people. So Christ has called all of, us, all of us to repentance and called us to accept the good news. If you accept it, you are given the privilege of being called the children of God. If you refuse it, you reject God. If you reject it, you reject good. If you reject it, you reject blessings. If you reject him, you reject light. But if you accept him, you accept light. You accept blessings. You accept the truth. Because the word is true. The word is light. And the word is blessings. And that's why the psalmist who understood this so ready to say today, when he began, I will give you the nations as your inheritance. When you are in him, he will give you a word as your inheritance. But cut off from him, you want that cause. So let's ask God to give us the grace today to listen to the message of Christ, repent, and believe the good news. But the kingdom of God is close at hand. The blessings of God is close at hand. The protection of God is close at hand. The providence of God is close at hand. 
All you need to do is to repent and believe the good news. May God give us grace to understand this today. That we believe the good news and repent from our old way of life. Once in Christ we become a new creation, the old self must disappear. May he give us grace to understand this today and accept the good news and repent from our old ways of life. We ask through Christ our Lord. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us. I will re repent and believe the good news. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you all. We still invite you this year to join us in the Good News Charity Organization. Be a member of the organization. See our numbers in the screen. See our account number in the screen. Tell us whichever one. Call us on the phone. And we will answer you. It's a sanctuary. We